this authorization header, and it will match a regular expression, and it will capture just the base 64 bit. So we, we have a regular expression capture. So in the second rule, we take just the base 64 bits, and then we decode it with our base 64 decode uh, transformation function. And then we move on to the third one. Uh, once you decode the base 64 part, you will in inside you will see the username, then a colon, and then the password. And we basically uh, make sure, uh, well, this rule m will match if the username is either admin, root, or backup, which is quite often used in, in, uh, when people are trying to uh, brute, uh, uh, brute force detect uh, the, the usernames in, in an application. So uh, the, the fact that you can actually take a piece of data then uh, identify a smaller part, decode it, and transform it in many ways, ways is what's making more security uh, really interesting. Especially this last part, uh, just to make sure that we can, you can do with more security, uh, you can do anything that you want it with more security. We've added a, a full scripting language in, into it. It's still a bit experimental. We're not sure what's going to, uh, we want to see uh, how users are going to use it. But you can ha actually have pro proper scripts uh, that can interface with the engine. They can talk to the engine to say, okay, in this example, give me the values of those uh, parameters, transform them in, in, in these ways uh, before you give them to me, and then you can use the Lua programming, which is like a proper scripting language, to do anything that you want with it and analyze. So this is designed for that very specific use case where you, you, you have a per, per, peculiar application and where you need to something to, to handle it uh, and you don't have any other way. Because this is uh, bound to be a bit slower than one you, what you can expect from running your uh, rules alone. And I'm going to end this presentation with, uh, uh, by describing to you the ecosystem that uh, makes uh, more security. Obviously, that there's more security itself, but we have something that's called core rules. If you don't want to spend too much time configuring more security, you can get, take this package, and by the way, it's bundled with more security these days. It's a, uh, it's a very nice optimized rule set that's uh, designed to not have too many false positives. You can take these rules, run them, and uh, uh, just uh, take the, the low hanging fruit. So that's, that's a very good way to start using it. By the way, most security can be deployed in detection only mode. So the way that you're deploying it, initially you, you turn detection mode uh, enable detection only mode, and then most security will not interfere with your transactions in any way. Once you're happy that you're not seeing false positives and it's not breaking anything, you can switch on to blocking if you wish. The second project is the most security community console. It's not an open source product, but it's a free one that supports up to three most security sensors, and you can actually collect alerts from all from from these three sensors. And it, it's, there, there's a nice nice GUI that allows you to look. At all your alerts, you can look into them. Uh, it, it can actually, actually produce reports, send you emails, and it basically provides uh, uh, the, 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 the minimum that you really need to use uh, more security comfortably in this, uh, this way. About, about the, major, the one major fun uh, function that's missing is uh, control of more security sensors. That's not available, so you will still have to use it, uh, uh, configure more security by hand. Mod Profiler is the latest addition to the uh, community, to the uh, uh, family. It's uh, an attempt, it, it, at the moment, it's a research project that we are taking mod security logs, um, so it's HTTP traffic, and we're creating, uh, automatically creating positive security models out of them, basically automatically locking down applications. I think this is really exciting because uh, I think nowadays applications just are designed to allow every request that's coming in, and I think that's fundamentally wrong. They should only allow requests that they are able to, to handle. Mod security will, uh, Mod Profiler will try to reverse that. Remo is a community project um, that actually uh, is a visual tool that allows you to take your input logs and manually create a policy security model, so that's, that's very handy. And finally, the project that we call Distributed Open Proxy Honeypots, <laughs> Basically what we have, we have a distributed network of reverse proxies, of open reverse proxies, and we are letting the bad guys go through them, but we have more security in all of them, and we have more security configured to log everything and send to a central logging host. So what we're really doing, we're spying on, on, the, on the bad guys uh, attacking people uh, using HTTP, and we are trying to learn from that so we would write better, better rules. And that's the end of my presentation. Uh, there are a few more slides there about the roadmap, but that's about it.
do you have any questions? Go ahead. Um, does not security get used for PCI compliance to deliver a PCI firewall? Yes. There's, there's been no debate about it. It's just it's okay. It's absolutely fine. You can read the qualification if you wish. Um, the the the. I found the PCI qualification very interesting because what it says that it's not the tool, it's how you use it. And by the way, most security is as capable, with the exclusion of learning, which most security doesn't have, most security is as capable or more capable than any other commercial web application for our product. Of course, you don't have the GUI. So I would uh, think about whether I will be deploying in my environment depending on what my circumstances are. Um, because you don't want to spend too much time on managing more security. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a very good product and uh, it does everything it needs to do. Run on Apache too? Yes, it does. Uh, 